Hello, everyone. Hello, thank you for joining us for our Getting Started with Code HS webinar. We are so excited to bring you some great tools and resources in different ways that you can engage with Code HS um, with your students this year. So we have lots of people starting to join. We're just going to wait a, a few seconds for um, to allow people to get into our webinar. Um, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Julia Trigo, and I am a PD specialist at Code HS. Um, I have all, I also worked on the curriculum team, so we're going to take a look at some courses um, today and um, a few of those courses um, I worked on developing. And I'm also joined by Don, who has a similar background. Um, he is working on the PD team currently, and he has also worked on curriculum and developed some of the courses we're going to take a look at. Um, and he's going to help us um, behind the scenes, answer some questions, make sure that you are getting all the information that you need for our session today. Um, so he will chime in. He has some really um, great experiences with using Code HS in the classroom. So um, we'll, we'll definitely make sure to, to get some of that great information to you as well. All right, we're going to get started. So you'll notice in our webinar um, Zoom settings, there is a Q&A button. So that is how um, at any point throughout our session today, you can ask questions there. Um, so make sure that you have that open at some or you know how to access it on your toolbar so that you are able to um, ask those questions as they come up. And either um, Don will answer those in, in there or he'll, if he, um, you know, it's a question that maybe we wanna discuss a little bit more, um, he'll bring it to my attention and we'll have a, a little chat about that. We wanna make sure that you are leaving today with what you came for. So the first thing that we are gonna start with is an account. So if you do not have a CodeHS account, um, you can click the link that uh, Don dropped right into the chat and this will get you signed up for an account. It will just ask you a few questions. You definitely wanna um, click that you are a teacher so that you will have access to all of the teacher information. Um, your students will join a little bit differently um, and we'll we will show um, how your students will join your courses in a little bit, um, a few minutes. Um, so if you do not have an account, you can click right on there and get that set up. If you wanna um, you know, hang back and watch our session today and then do this later, that is fine as well. Um, you will get all of these slides at this link as well. So you'll be able to um, go back and get all of these links in the slide deck. If you would like to have the slide deck up and um, on your screen, on a different screen as we're going through today, that is an option as well. Um, but let's take a look at our agenda. We only have about 30 minutes together, so we're going to cram a lot of information in. So first, we're going to look, what is Code HS? What is this company? What are we providing for you? Um, looking at what are your course goals, because you may um, not know all, what, you, um, what course you're going to teach with Code HS, or you may not um, know all of the offerings that we have. So we're going to take a quick look at what are your goals, what are you looking for in a course for your students this year, and then we'll look at the course catalog to see all of the offerings that we have and how those can match up with those goals. We're going to take a quick look at setting up different courses and sections so that you know how to get um, your courses into your CodeHS account and then get students into those sections. And then we're going to look at customization. How can you make um, courses on CodeHS your own. There is a lot of um, really powerful tools that you can use to alter the curriculum that we have provided so that it is going to work for your students. All right, so we're going to dive right in. So at CodeHS, we, our main goal is that we're comprehensive. We are, our goal is to provide everything that you need to teach computer science. Um, and this spans farther than just programming. Um, we do have a um, web-based IDE, so students are able to write programs and um, you are able to grade programs right on our website. You don't need any downloads, um, but we go further than just um, programming. And we're gonna take a look at all of those different course offerings in a bit. Um, we do have offerings for middle and high school, and we also just um, released an elementary curriculum as well. Um, so we do have K through 12 
curriculum that is all free. All of our curriculum, all of our courses are free. We offer both virtual online and offline professional development. Um, we have synchronous and asynchronous, um, and we have um, PD that is specific to districts or um, generalized like this one we're in today. Um, we have a whole suite of tools and resources for teachers to use um, to make sure that even if you are not don't have a background in computer science, you still feel comfortable and um, supported bringing this information to your students because we believe that all students should have an opportunity to learn computer science. So this um, platform that we have is going to allow you to communicate with your students. They are going to get instant feedback through some of our auto graders, which is a really popular and um, and helpful time saver for teachers. Um, and students are able to very quickly see if their programs are working the way that they want or if something needs to be changed. Um, there's a lot of ways for you to track your students and grade your students and everything is on our site. So no need to, um, to download anything. All right, as a quick overview, we're gonna dive into how do you choose a course? So these are just, this is maybe a, quarter or a fifth of all of the course options that we have. Um, and that would probably even discount uh, the state courses, which we're going to look at as well. So how do you know what is a course for you, right? There's so many overwhelming possibilities. So here's some things that you might want to think about. Relating those courses to your goals for your students. So are you looking for an introductory computer science course? Are you trying to focus on programming or do you want to look at something else like cybersecurity or a different type of programming like web design? Um, are you looking for your students to specifically focus on one language or one topic, or do you want to give them a little bit of a taste of multiple topics? And then how, do you want to include those advanced topics? How um, high of a difficulty level are you looking for? Other things you want to think about, we have a lot of different options um, all the way from just short three to five day, day projects, all the way to full year courses and pathways. So um, if you are saying, you know, I only have a quarter um, of the year to spend with my students on computer science for a semester, um, you can um, look and we have all of these different uh, courses to fit those timing options. Some of our courses allow you to use blocks um, when they're coding instead of just text-based. So that's something to think about. Um, do your students have any experience coding? Do you wanna start them at the intro level? Are you just looking for a refresher? And that also might um, lead us to the customization that we are gonna talk about later. And are there specific standards that you need to address? So um, is there a framework that you need to make sure you're hitting? And how do you know that? Um, and we're gonna take a look at that in just a bit. So keeping all of that in mind, we're gonna do a quick overview of um, a good amount of our courses. Um, I, I still this will not include all of them because we have too many. So um, for middle school, our most popular course, um, full year course is computing ideas. So this is going to be a full year middle school course. That's a survey course. It's just gonna allow students to have a little bit of information about a lot of different computer science topics. So they're getting a little bit of cybersecurity in the digital citizenship and cyber hygiene unit. They're getting some web design, learning HTML and CSS. They are um, getting a little bit of JavaScript, um, programming with Carol the dog, learning about digital information and bits and bytes and how all of that becomes um, an image or um, a piece of information, learning about the internet and how computers uh, communicate to each other. So lots of different topics in this um, course. And it can, each of these modules is standalone. So you don't have to teach every single one of them um, if this is something that you're interested in with your students. We, one of our really popular courses is our tech apps and coding course. And this is again, for mostly middle school students, this is 100% aligned to the CSTA2 standards. So if you are um, someone looking to hit the CSTA2 standards, if you teach this course in its entirety, you will have hit every single standard in that framework. Um, you'll see there are some uh, similar units to the previous course that we looked at, Computing Ideas. Um, this is also going to in, um, include some programming of Python with Tracy the Turtle. 
They're gonna also use some physical devices, um, micro bits in here. Um, so there's a few um, things that are, are different to make sure that we're hitting those standards in this course. Um, okay, our um, introduction to CS courses. So these are our programming courses. So we have an introduction to computer science and JavaScript, Python and Java. Um, and the Java course is a little bit different than our CSA course, which we'll talk about a little bit later if you're thinking about that. Um, so both uh, the Python and, and JavaScript and Java, um, they all are introductory. Students do not need to come in learning anything, uh, knowing any background about computer science. Um, they are going to um, learn all of the um, fundamental computer science topics like loops and control structures and functions and um, different uh, data, data structures. Um, and they are a good way to get students started. So they're both going to start, JavaScript and Python are gonna start with a more fun gamified graphical um, introduction that's going to then allow students to have a jumping off point to get into higher level computer science topics as they go through the year. And all of these courses are year long courses that um, can be shortened in different ways. All right, I alluded to one of our AP courses. So for AP Computer Science Principles, we do have three different options um, of teaching this course, hitting all of the AP CSP um, necessary topics. And these are all aligned to College Board. Um, they're all endorsed by College Board. And we also have a review course that um, you can use at the end of the year to pre prepare your students for their tests. So if you are interested in teaching computer science principles in Python, we have that option. Um, we also have it in JavaScript. And then the cybersecurity option is going to have students um, still hit all of the computer science principles content, but with a cybersecurity focus. So this might be a, a nice way to um, add some non-programming, uh, more cyber-focused content into your course. We have a few CSA courses. Um, our College Board endorsed course is the Nitro course. So that's the one at the top. Um, and that is going to follow the sequence of the APCSA um, College Board uh, structure. We also have a MOCA course, which the structure isn't followed the same way, but all of the topics are still hit as well. This is a, our older course. And then we do have a full course of labs for CSA, and we have a review course for that as well. All right, let's look at some other courses that we have. So web design, I talked about for a bit. Um, you can see here we have a web design Picasso, which is high school. Matisse is for middle school. They're both year long. Um, Monet is a semester long for high school. So it's uh, just less content. Um, and then we have these other courses that are going to include some web design content in them, um, maybe just a unit or a module, um, but students are going to get a little bit of HTML and CSS in those. We have a bunch of cybersecurity courses, starting with our fundamentals of cybersecurity course. Um, that's gonna be our intro course. Then once students um, take that course and are excited to continue with their cybersecurity information, um, our advanced cybersecurity course is that option. And then we have um, a few lessons that can be dropped into other courses. So if you are just teaching the intro to JavaScript course, but you want students to get a little bit of cybersecurity information, you can go to those lessons from JavaScript and add those to your course. And again, we're gonna look at how you can customize to make those things happen. We have two physical computing courses. Um, these are each a quarter long, um, but they do require some background information um, in uh, co with computer science topics. So they'll students will be refreshing their knowledge on loops and control structures and functions. Um, so if you want to teach these courses, but you do not have students with that information, we have some options as well. You'll see in the micro bit, you can teach the micro bit course with either Carol, if you wanna use the JavaScript language or Tracy for the Python language. And then um, we have those options for the Arduino as well. The difference in these, in these courses is just um, the 
the level of the device. So they're both going to hit the same information, but the micro bit is a little bit easier. So we push those more towards middle school students and the Arduino um, really needs a breadboard um, right at the beginning. So that's a little bit more um, in depth. So that is a better choice for high school students. We have a bunch of interdisciplinary courses. So if you are someone who doesn't teach a full computer science course, but you want to bring computer science into your classroom, these are a lot of really nice options there. Um, and these can also be used as fillers for students who are finishing their work early or um, before a break. Um, maybe just if they're doing computer science applications, it's a really a lot of syntax and they just want a little brain break from that, they can uh, use these as well. We have a bunch of new courses. We have artificial intelligence, game design and unity, data science, data structures. Um, these all, I, I, I could talk about the, all our courses for the whole half hour, um, but I wanna show you how to get, get into these courses. So if you have want more information on these, I'm gonna show you how to get to those in the catalog. And we also have a few IB courses and our most uh, brand new courses, you'll see both month long courses, um, creating a game in Roblox and digital art with P5JS. So both of these are really, really popular. Excited um, about computer science with things that they are already interested in. All right, we have a bunch of hour of code options as well. And um, I talked a little bit about state courses. So we have, oh, sorry, I'm going a little quick for the links, but um, our hour of code we're gonna look at in our course catalog. So I'm just gonna pause on that. And our state pages, um, if you go to codehs.com slash states, I'm just gonna travel over there for a second. Um, you'll have this interactive map and you can hover over your state. I'm gonna go to Virginia because that's where I am. And you'll see a specific page with all information about computer science in your state. If we have developed any specific computer science courses that link to your state um, frameworks or standards, those will be available at the top. You'll be able to see some information about where computer science is in your state, some statistics, um, optional pathways. And then here's that standards page. So you can find your state and your um, specific framework and look at which courses are going to align and how many of those standards will align. So this is a really helpful page if you are someone who is interested in a specific standard for a uh, framework for your state. All right, and then the course catalog. So I showed you all these offerings, but how do you get there? So we have a direct link um, to the course catalog, but I want to show you if you're anywhere on the site, you can always find it. So if I'm over on my main site, once you log into CodeHS, you may not have a lot of op courses here already, sections here. Um, we're gonna talk about that in a bit. But the main thing I want you to see is that this bar at the top will always be there. And this toolbox I, um, option is going to show you a lot of different things. The way that we wanna get to our course catalog is going toolbox, resources, course catalog. And you can see um, we have some tool options as well that will put maybe your most recent. You see, I use the course catalog a lot. You can favorite some of these so that they'll pop up here. Um, but in resources, course catalog, once we click there, it will open up our page where you can scroll through all of our courses. That might not be the best way to find what you're looking for. So we have lots of filters. I alluded really quickly to those hour of code options. So if you're just looking for hour of code, you can filter there and uh, scroll through those options. If you're looking for a specific language or a grade level, um, you can look for your state here, look for just AP courses, search for a course, lots of options um, for navigating through the course catalog. All right. I am gonna move on, or do we have any questions, um, Don, at this point? We had a few uh, questions that we answered in, in, in the uh, Q&A. There were some good ones. Uh, okay. Folks just uh, curious about the materials, you know, what's available free versus pro. And uh, 
you know, just some questions about Python and um, whether or not the session is recorded. So we've answered those. And if there's any more, keep them coming. Perfect. Yeah, keep those in the in the Q&A. Don is, is on those answers. So th that's great because our 20 minutes is ready up. Okay. All right. So now we're going to look at how we can manage courses and sections. Um, this, the main difference is that a course is a, um, a piece of content that we have created, right? A, a group of activities and lessons. A section is specific to your students or to your um, your group of students, a, a class a class group. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do these inside our um, our system here. So there's a, a few ways for you to add a course um, to your list. So let's say that I wanted to um, teach this introduction to computer science and JavaScript. I can click add to courses and this will um, open an option for me to name your course. And you might be wondering, well, the course already has a name. It's introduction to, com to computer science and JavaScript. But the reason you're putting a name on it is because you can then alter this course to be whatever you want. So if you actually wanted this to be JavaScript and web design, maybe you want to teach a course that has a little bit of both. You can um, title your course here, and then we're going to learn in just a, a minute how to customize this to make those options stick. There's also a way for you, if you are not in the course catalog, on your main page, um, you're going to be in sections automatically. If we click into courses on this left toolbar, you're going to see I have a bunch already. Um, what if I wanted to say, maybe I'm going to teach an intro to robotics course. And I'm going to use the Arduino with JavaScript course. So I'm going to click create new course. I'm putting my title in here. And now it's going to say, do I want to use a CodeHS template or do I want to start from scratch? We highly suggest using one of our templates because starting from scratch can be really overwhelming and you're going to have to find all of the pieces all over. So if you start with the course template, let's say if I'm looking for the Arduino course and I'm going to use the one with JavaScript, I'm going to select this course. And now it's going to tell me this course has been created and I can right away view that course. I named it Intro to Robotics. So here is my course. I can create, you'll see I have zero sections, which means I have this course, it has content in it, but there's no way for students to be added to this course yet. To do that, I'm gonna to need to create a section. So I can go um, click this little icon here, create a new section. And once I click there, um, it's already linked to the course that I chose. Maybe this is gonna be period five robotics. So I'm gonna create that class that section, I can then hop right in. I can add another section if maybe I have period two as well. I can view my roster, I can view the assignments. Um, and I wanna show you how to get to that if once this page is gone. So when you first come into CodeHS, anytime you click this main button, it will automatically bring you to your sections page. You have my sections at the top and you have, my, you have sections on the side. So there's a lot of ways to get to the same place. If I find that period five robotics course, I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna see my roster page. Right now I have no students in this course. The way that students are going to join your section in CodeHS is using this link. So once students sign up for, um, they create a login for their student account on CodeHS, you send them this link and they are going to be added as a student into your course. Um, they, If they're ever asked for a class code, you'll see it here as well. It's the last five digits of that URL. So students can join your class right away using this link. So now where is the content of this course, right? This is just my roster page up here. If I click over to assignments, and again, we have multiple ways to get there, assignments here, assignments here. Um, we can see all of the content, all of the modules and lessons and activities that students are going to be completing as they go through this intro to robotics course. Right now, I have not changed anything from the standard course. So we have, we're starting with Carol because we're learning JavaScript. 
we're getting a little bit of JavaScript graphics, and then we're hopping into some Arduino content. So how can we um, customize this course? I'm gonna show you a few ways. And again, I this is so much content to give you. You will get the recording, you will get the slides. Um, and we have, I'll show you at the very end how you can access this um, if you have a specific question. Um, you know, anytime we're we're done with our webinar. Okay, so um, if we want to change the order of something, we can just click edit. We can now drag and drop these modules. So that's a helpful feature there. Um, there are other ways to reorder. So you can see also any of these modules have the ellipses. You can choose move down, but now in order to move it, you're gonna have to click it every time. So that's why the um, dragging option is helpful. And if there's maybe a lesson, maybe you're like, you know, my students already um, know Carol. I don't actually need them to do it. We maybe have done this in, you know, middle school with them. I can remove this module from my course by clicking the ellipses, clicking remove, and clicking delete. And there is a way to get it back, um, but we're not going to get into that yet. So I can remove the Carol content from here. I want students to start right away at JavaScript and graphics and get right into the content. Um, you can also add um, modules, lessons, assignments from here. Um, you can add information from the bottom. So I'm going to show you first how to add um, Code HS content. And then I'm going to show you how to add your own content. So like I said before, say you wanted to um, teach web design and JavaScript. So maybe you start with the JavaScript course and you want to add some web design. We can click this search for content at the bottom. And this is something a lot of teachers don't know exists. Um, most of our courses have this supplemental material section. So the midterm for, I would say most of our courses have a midterm if they're year long. Um, it will not already be in the course. So if you wanted to add that, all you have to do, go to supplemental materials, click assign, and that will get added to your course. You'll have a bunch of options here. Click assign. And we will see when we refresh our page that that module is going to get added to the bottom of the list. So that new uh, midterm module is going to show up right behind final exam here. And then right here, I can use my dragging and dropping and reorder um, that module, put it in a better spot than at the end of the course. Um, so that's one way to add um, extra Code HS um, content. You can also add content from the course catalog. So other courses you can add there. You can also add, like I had showed you up this up here at the top, you can add from Code HS course. But now with our very last uh, few minutes, how can I get you started um, looking at adding things for yourself? So if you wanted to add a module, I would add it up here. So maybe I want to add a getting started module. And I am going to add that. It will automatically go to the bottom. So I can drag that to the top. And now my getting started module is right at the top. Now, if I wanted to add a lesson or an activity, I would not suggest doing it over here. I would add it right to the module that I wanted. So in my getting started module, if I expand it, there's nothing in there. I can click add new lesson and maybe I wanna give them some videos. So I'm going to create a new lesson called videos. If I expand this lesson, you'll see currently there's nothing in it. I can add a new assignment. And once we add an assignment, you have so many different options of what type of assignment you would like to add. One tip is that um, if you are looking to add anything from a Google Doc, a Google Form, a Google Slides, article is the way to go. So um, that's the one, the one real helpful tip I'll give you. Um, but I wanted to add a video. So I'm going to click video. I'm going to hop over here and get my Learn Arduino in 15 Minutes video. And I'm going to paste the URL right here. I can say um, learn Arduino video. I can type in this is a cool video. Anything I want my students to see there for some directions. I'm going to click save and continue. 
and I will have some options here, some settings. If I save and finish, I can preview this uh, new assignment. And now I will see that um, video embedded in my course, um, in my getting started module, in that video's lesson, you'll see the, the title and any description there. So any information you wanna give your students. And if we head back over here, we can see now that um, activity is now inside my videos um, lesson in my getting started module. Um, so you can add, like I said, lots of different activity types there. Um, I know this was a, a lot to, to get right away. We're ready at the end of our time. Um, but if you are wondering, like, you showed me this, I don't remember how, how do you get support? So there's a support button right on the side that you'll always have access to. And the one thing I want to point out is this knowledge base. If you click on knowledge base, this is like our FAQ center. Say you're looking for customization. If you type that in, you're gonna see lots of different options that um, will give you step-by-step -step information for how to um, you know, answer your, your own questions so you don't have to wait for an answer from us. There's always a way to contact us right there and ask a question um, to us as well. Julia, I just wanted to mention, uh, I, I was typing in a response to Tracy. She was asking about access controls. I'm pretty sure that access controls are a part of the pro plan. Do teachers have a, an, an opportunity to hide things from students with the free with the free version? I don't think so. The way that I would do it is create the content in a different course, and then maybe you can add that content to the course once you're ready for students to see it. That would be maybe the workaround. Good question. So I have lots of slides here that I'm not going to go through, but we do have some just to finish up today. Um, we do have a survey. I know this was super quick, a lot of information. Um, there's so much that we want to show you when you're just getting started with Code HS. Um, but we do have a survey. If you, um, if there's anything you know you you were were looking for, or um, you have any feedback for us, we really appreciate um, getting that feedback from you. We have a lot of other resources. Um, I'm not going to, you know, specifically talk about all of them because we're already uh, over our time. But um, this learn more is a really great way to just shoot us a, a message, and and we will. Um, reply back with whatever you're looking for. And our last thing that I want to just point out, if you are a teacher who maybe is using Code HS Pro and you're, you know, you're like, well, there's so many other features. How do I know how to use those? We are having a free webinar um, on Thursday um, at 2 p.m. Central. That is going to be talking about a lot of those pro tools. And we just um, updated our web design course. So if you are interested in looking, learning more about those changes that we made um, next Tuesday at 2.30 Central, we will have um, a webinar on that as well. So you can get all of those from the link in the chat. Yeah, there were so many good, uh, so many good questions as well that were asked. Uh, integrations with Schoology, yes. Can you import? Uh, from Google Classroom, absolutely. And uh, I'm gonna put this free workshops link in as well. Thanks for all the great questions, everybody. Yeah, we do have a lot of integrations. Um, some of them are at the district level. Um, Google Classroom is something that is available to every teacher. So you should be able to um, find some information in the knowledge base on that as well. All right. so. We know that you signed up for this for only a half hour. We want to respect your time, but we will stick around and finish um, and answer any of those questions you still have. Um, you will receive this recording and the slide deck, which will go through a lot of those features that I um, went through very quickly today. Um, but please let us know um, in that workshop survey if there's anything else you were looking for and have a great school year. Yeah. And uh, we do, I had a question, do we have integrations with Canvas? Absolutely. And uh, can students go out of order? You can assign students to do whatever module, whatever module you'd like in whatever order you'd like. And you can yeah, customize so you it. A, a bunch of different, if you had 
JavaScript and web design, some students could start on JavaScript, some students could start on web design if that was, you know, the instructions that you gave to them. Thank all of you for coming today. Good questions, good group. Thank you so much. All right. All right. I think that's all the questions. Perfect.